So how did you break up the UI into smaller components? Well, you might have thought that this could be two columns. But then it would be hard to position the elements here. You could center them vertically within the height of the screen, but it wouldn't necessarily line up with the temperature views on the left-hand side. Instead, this looks more like a horizontal linear layout. Then the rest of the elements could be laid out by using a vertical linear layout. The vertical linear layout would have six children. The third element would be a horizontal linear layout composed of two children. The first would be another vertical linear layout with these two text views, and the second element would be another vertical linear layout composed of these two elements. To make the contents of the whole screen vertically scrollable, we put it inside a scroll view. Using a list view here would be overkill because we don't need to scale to an infinite number of items and we don't need recycling. There's a fixed number of fields on the screen, so scroll view is a perfect choice. I can show you our implementation for the fragment detail XML layout. We hard-coded some data in the layout so that it would show up as a preview in the design pane. At the root of the view hierarchy, we have a scroll view. Scroll views can only have max one child, so we set that to be the vertical linear layout. Inside of this layout, we have a text view for the day of the week, the calendar date, and then a horizontal linear layout. This is followed by the humidity text view, wind text view, and pressure text view. In the XML code, we see the scroll view with the child linear layout. We give it some padding of 16 dips so that the content is not flush up against the edge of the screen. Then we see the text views followed by the horizontal linear layout. We specify layout margin top of 16 dip to give it some more space from the bottom of this text view. Within this horizontal linear layout, we have one vertical linear layout which has a width of zero and a weight of one and another linear layout with a width of zero and a weight of one. That means that both of these children have equal width. For this linear layout, we specify gravity to be center horizontal. That means that the contents inside of it will be centered horizontally, which includes the icon as well as the forecast text view. Lastly, we have the remaining text views for the other weather details. When the layout looks good, we update the detail fragment. At this point, we also move it into its own file. In the onload finish method, we used to have a find view by ID call to find the text view. Now that the detail fragment has a lot more views, we don't want to continue adding even more find view by ID calls here because it will have to traverse the view hierarchy every time that the loader refreshes. Instead, we modify the onCreateView method. Once the fragment is inflated, we go ahead and find a reference to all the views that we're going to need later on. We store these views as member variables of the class, which is why the names start with the letter M. In the onCreateLoader method, we make sure that the projection for our content provider query contains all the information that we need. It's declared at the top of the file. Before we had it called forecast columns, but we just renamed it to detail columns. And we also added some more columns because now we're displaying more information on this screen. Then in the onload finished method, we get a cursor back with the data we need. We read the weather condition ID from the cursor because we're going to need it to determine which image to display. But for now, we can use a placeholder icon. We continue reading from the cursor to get the date, the description, and the other fields. To format the data properly for the user, we also copied over the strings in the utility method from the gist. 